avocados and why they should make us all choke. Green gold, white gold, blood diamonds, palm oil, almond and almond milk. Why you really need to know where your avocados come from. Because the environmental cost, the human cost, the corruption, the destruction of habitats and the displacement of entire communities due to often state-sponsored stealing of water should leave a bad taste in your mouth. I read an article earlier this year. It was a statement from a, a UK government minister. It could have been Sadiq Khan or Priti Patel talking about the rise in middle class at dinner party cocaine use. Not sure why I didn't get the memo. Perhaps I need new friends. Anyway, the point of the article, apart from pointing out to most people like me that we're missing out apparently on some really cracking parties, was that the real reason that we should not be calling our drug dealers when we book our Waitrose deliveries is not because it's bad for us, but because it fuels exploitation, displacement of communities, destruction of habitats, and lawlessness all along the supply chain. Cocaine use is not a victimless crime, and neither is our unsustainable appetite for avocados. Today, I'm going to explain why corporate greed, drug cartels, yes, the same ones involved in cocaine, extreme and worsening drought conditions, corruption and water theft should leave you choking on your next mouthful of guacamole. So let's get on with it. Look, I love an avocado as much as the next man, woman or non-binary. Indeed, as a salad dodging wannabe vegan, avocados are one of the very few vegetables I actually enjoy. Yes, I know you can put your typing fingers back in your guacamole. I know they are a fruit. So anyway, so in researching ethical avocados, I am truly devastated to tell you that I have yet to find any form of growing avocados that is truly sustainable on a scalable level that would come close to feeding our current growing global appetite for this wonder fruit. There are two main issues and the first one is obvious. So using a line from the Eagles Hotel California, call something paradise and kiss it goodbye. What do I mean by that? Well, this wonder fruit, this superfood, this amazingly popular, the versatile and tasting avocado is your paradise. And consumerism, self-entitlement, corporate greed and demand is the kiss goodbye. We've done the same with palm oil, where we are literally destroying rainforests, the actual lungs of our planet, to feed our global appetite for, again, an amazingly versatile and therefore commercially lucrative fruit. But avocados have another issue. One they share with almond and almond milk and another that they share with cocaine. So listen up. The first issue is water. Each avocado needs 320 litres of water to grow. 320 litres is a staggeringly big number for one avocado. I mean, mind-bogglingly big. Impossible to get your head around. What was God even thinking of? So how much is 320 litres? 320 litres would be the same as the liquid content of 427 bottles of wine, just one avocado. Six five minute showers, one avocado. Three full baths, one avocado. 100 days of the recommended daily fluid intake of each adult to grow just one avocado. If you want to save water, stop eating avocados. But so what? Water's free, right? If you have just one avocado tree, it might not need to be watered, as it would most probably just soak up the groundwater. And obviously this is sustainable. But when you build a monoculture of 1,000, 10,000 or 100,000 trees with an average yield of 150 avocados per tree, even if you planted these in Wales, where it seems to rain almost all the time, the water table would not be enough to sustain them. And you can't grow avocados in Wales. Why can't you grow avocados in Wales? Avocados can only grow in warm weather and sub-humid climates, primarily tropical and Mediterranean temperatures that stay warm all year round. And I can tell you Wales doesn't do that. 
And being a tropical plant, an avocado tree hates growing in anything less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or although mature trees can tolerate temperatures as low as, I think, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I lived in Wales for about 20 years, and I, and I can assure you that is not Wales. Subhumid means slightly humid, but not humid enough for trees to grow. Or indeed, drought-like conditions. Drought-like conditions. So by having a small farm of around a thousand trees in drought-like conditions, i.e. not Wales, you would have to find 48 million litres of water. Now, if you wanted a farm of 10,000 trees, you would need 480 million litres of water. If you wanted a farm of 100,000 trees, you would need 4,800 million litres of water. And, and that might sound crazy to you, but the largest avocado farm is actually in Uganda with 350,000 trees. So that works out at 16,800 million litres of water. So how do you squeeze 16,800 million litres of water out of a drought-stricken country? Basically, you steal it. You steal it from the small, sustainable farmer who can now no longer even live where he used to farm, who, or who is now most probably working for pennies on the same farm that has taken all of his water, either through state-sponsored water theft, like in Chile, or drug cartel intimidation, murder, theft, and extortion in Mexico. And what about the environment? Look, we are not talking about taking snow from the Eskimos here. I think I've rather mixed up my metaphors there. But anyway, the point is, this is not taking something from someone who has an abundance of it. It is stealing from someone who has nothing. Then wondering why we are seeing climate-driven migration on a scale never seen before, as entire communities are displaced. So what's the answer? The answer is, and you won't want to hear this if you like avocados, is avocados, unlike cocaine, are a finite commodity for which we appear to have an infinite appetite. There is simply not enough sustainable avocados to go around. For sure, there are still some ethical and sustainable growers out there, and I will put a link to a couple in the description below. But this model, it's not scalable, and not even close to being able to meet our current and growing demand. So next time you want some guacamole, Remember that this is not, it's not a victimless crime. And trust me, it is every bit as much a crime as if you stick a rolled up tenor up your nose. <laughs> Look, running this channel is an absolute bitch of a way of spending my days. It is a thankless task that even when I'm preaching to the converted, I'm con constantly giving people bad news, things they don't want to hear. No avocados, no SUVs, no more wood burners, no beef. Does this twat want us to live in a cave? And that's just the good guys. The climate change deniers are relentless, abusive, often personal, and almost always nonsensical. But anyway, because of the confrontational nature and subject matter of this channel, YouTube and social media in general see me as some sort of subversive. So by subscribing to my channel or sharing this video with your friends, you are really helping me to reach a wider audience and hopefully allowing me to affect positive change. Please also do let me have your comments or feedback. How do you feel about our unsustainable appetite for avocados? And oh, please do make sure you uh, scratch the like button. Of course, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Well, hopefully not before checking out one of these two fantastic videos recorded in full Technicolor. They stab it with their steely knives, but they still can't kill the beast.